For the fourth straight day, the province of Saskatchewan has set a record. Yesterday, there were 265 people in hospital with COVID-19, 54 of them in intensive care. But beyond the numbers are people, the patients and the medical professionals who look after them. I want to bring in two physicians in Saskatchewan now. Dr. Paul Olshinsky is an ER doctor and an associate professor of emergency medicine at the University of Saskatchewan. And Dr. James Stempion is in addition to being an ER doctor, is also a transport physician. Thank you both for taking the time. Uh, I want to ask you both, what are you seeing right now in the hospitals and ERs where you work? Uh, Dr. Olshinsky, I'll start with you. Well, you know, I was in this morning, and one of the things you'll notice uh, in Saskatoon, for example, is that because of the significant surgical slowdowns and procedural kind of delays and cancellations around other care, um, we've created more space for the patients who are coming into the ER. And so actually in the emergency room now, uh, patients are presenting, we're seeing that, that significant spike in COVID cases, we're still seeing other uh, presentations, chest pain, uh, possible heart attacks and, and other conditions. But because the hospital has shifted into this kind of crisis mode and we've canceled a bunch of procedures and surgeries, we actually have room to accommodate now that we didn't have two weeks ago. So is that, uh, is that good or bad? I mean, or is that just, you're, you're, these are just mitigating measures that you're just trying to kind of figure out what to do? Well, you've, what you've done and, and what the system had to do is shift the burden onto those people who are waiting for surgeries, waiting for procedures, waiting for tests that are sometimes invasive. And we've essentially had to say to them, because we didn't mitigate, because we didn't vaccinate, because we didn't put the right policies in place, uh, you're going to have to suffer longer while we get through this unnecessary fourth wave. And, and Dr. Olshinsky, do you think people's lives uh, are, are at risk? I mean, some of these procedures are very serious, right? I mean, I'm not talking about, about the COVID patients. I'm talking about the other patients. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I mean, what what is a patient who ha is waiting for a biopsy for a potential cancerous growth What's going through their mind every day while they wait for those types of procedures to take place? You know, that's yeah. absolutely, it's compromising care. Yeah, and Dr. Stampian, what's it like for you, now for you and your, and your cohort? Well, I mean, very similar to Paul's experience that, um, you know, the, the patients who are now um, populating the ICU more and more, the Patients who weren't vaccinated are displacing other patients who require care, who want care, who are now having to stay at home because they can't get their procedures done. They can't, uh, they're at risk of uh, contracting COVID if they're immunocompromised, if they come into the hospital. As a transport physician, we've added a third helicopter, which is necessary to help transport uh, patients across the province. Um, uh, that's something that we wouldn't have had to do if uh, if our vaccination rates were better. So yeah, there's um, there's a great concern among all health professionals across the, across the province. And Dr. Sempian, is is the vast majority of the patients that you are treating with serious COVID uh, ICU or hospitalization they are unvaccinated? No, absolutely. So the, the vast majority of patients that are ending up in the ICU that are COVID positive are unvaccinated. We've had uh, to take patients in our pediatric ICU who are adults, I think up to 40 years old. Um, you know, that sort of situation would not be happening if uh, our vaccination rates were higher. So Dr. Uh, Olshinsky, what needs to be done right now to try and deal with this situation so that you aren't having to put off those important uh, biopsies, that you can get a handle on, on, on the situation, on the stress on the healthcare staff. Yeah, and, and again, and to highlight, it's not just the stress on the healthcare staff because the burden is now being displaced onto all those patients who uh, are waiting for care, who did, their, who did the right thing. Many of them went and got vaccinated. And I think the, the reality is, and I think there's a growing chorus. I mean, we've been in this now for 19 months. We've spent lots of time educating you know, contrary to the, the comments by some of our elected officials in this province, the medical community has gone above and beyond to engage with the public, you know, as early as taking pictures of ourselves, getting our vaccines, trying to assure the patient, you know, the patients and the population in general that these are safe uh, measures and that vaccination is good. 
And I think at this point, we're at the point where it really, it's about policy and it's about enforcing policy. So it means, as reluctant as some governments are, to bring in mask mandates, it means bringing in vaccination mandates, vaccination verification and passport systems. But the other, and the other piece is not just to pay lip service to it, they need to bring in enforcement and support so that these measures are actually happening on the ground. Um, you know, Dr. Stempian and I have spoken a, a little bit on this, you know, we've worked together regularly and we've spoken on the side. The other things that people could start doing is just getting, just start volunteering and liberally sharing your vaccine status. Even if your, your sports team doesn't ask for it, even if your kids uh, sports team or your book club doesn't ask for it, start sharing your vaccine status. That's going to allow you to assess the risk that you're taking by participating in those events. But it also helps normalize vaccination. And those few people who might be on the team or might be in the group that are hesitant, it might be enough for them to realize, wow, everyone else is getting vaccinated. Maybe I should too. Dr. Stampin, your thoughts on that in terms of sharing oh. vaccination status? No, I, I agree completely. Um, over the weekend, I was proctoring an exam and I was in a hotel in Winnipeg. And every time I needed to go to a restaurant or get something to eat, it was just normal. You know, what's your vaccine status? We need to see it. No one complained. It was just part of, as they would explain, this is part of taking care of your neighbor. And I think that's that's what this the vaccine vaccinations are all about. It's not about a personal choice. It's about looking after your neighbor, looking after your friends, making sure that they're being safe. And I think Saskatchewan's got a long tradition of looking after each other. And I think that's what we have to get mm -hmm. back to, realizing that um, we're displacing people who need care by not getting va our vaccine. By getting vaccine, you're looking after your neighbors, you're looking after your friends. Um, Dr. Olshinsky, you know, we're, we're seeing that there is likely federal assistance uh, heading to Alberta because of the situation there, that uh, they are on the cusp of triage. There's probably triage already happening, but a formal uh, implementation of triage, which, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think we've seen in this country in modern times. Uh, is, is Saskatchewan nearing that point? Every, um, every indication that I've heard from our leadership within the health authority and our leadership within critical care says yes, we are heading in that direction. Um, I know that my colleague, Dr. Susan Shaw, has been uh, you know, at interviews. And if we continue on our current tra trajectory, and, and that means if we keep relying on failed approaches like you know, personal responsibility, et cetera, et cetera, if we don't, if we don't start creating real policies that have real enforcement, um, then we are headed in that direction uh -huh. as per the graphs, as per the charts, as per the numbers. Dr. Stempian, Dr. Olshinsky, I want to ask you both if you have, I want you to give two messages. One is a message that you think is important to the political leaders in your province, and the second is to the people of Saskatchewan. Dr. Stempian, I'll first go to you. Um, I think if I was going to give any message at all, it would be that um, we, we have to be more serious about pushing our vaccine status, pushing the whole concept of um, masking, um, the vaccine passports, everything that we can do to mitigate this virus and everything we can do to protect the population of Saskatchewan. We, we need to do a full court press now to make sure that uh, people across the province realize how important this is. Dr. Olshinsky? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo that, and I and I, I want to take it a little bit more directly to your because to the listeners because I, you know, governments, um, you know, they, they can be tough to get through, and we continue to advocate and 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 try, um, but I really think what's happening is we're kind of seeing a bit of like a bystander effect, or you know, that diffusion of responsibility on this huge scale. So people have gotten vaccinated. They're listening to this. They're like, yeah, I agree. I don't know what more to do. And I think the key next step is to really just, without waiting for government, for each citizen of Saskatchewan and of Canada, in fact, to start making those, just initiating those conversations. Your kids are registered for sports this fall. They're registered for activities, maybe an art class. Bring up vaccination status. Bring up what your status is and, and maybe even express that you'd like to know that the group is safe. And, and it's going to be weird. It's an unprecedented time. No one wanted to go to this, but we're in a pandemic. And I think that's the way we need to go to get out of it. 
I want to appreciate, uh, I want to say that I appreciate your time very much. Thank you both uh, very much. That's Saskatoon ER doctors, Paul Olshinsky and James Stempian.